more life, more blessings. You see the smile on our good friend's face. We haven't named our third uh, host yet, but you know, he's always happy. But it says, Do It For The Love Podcast. You know me, your host, Eric Buddy Davis. You know my co-host is in the building. So I'll spit fire, what's going on? And as usual, we're feeling good, feeling great. Feeling great, feeling good, and we hope you are too. For all our first time listeners, all of the people that watch our show, you know, we like to start off checking each other's temperature. I got to see how my brother's doing throughout the week. He got to see how I'm doing throughout the week. And in the comment sections as y'all watch these episodes, let us know how y'all doing throughout the week. You can answer each and every segment as the show goes on. So my brother, what's the tip? Good. Feeling good? So good. Start, day started out so good that I'm almost afraid it's going to end bad. I had a superstition that my day started out too good. It's usually going to end rocky. But I'm going to have high hopes that it's going to be good. I just got that text from Melo. Right before we started, drop eight. Okay. Four rebounds, two okay. steals, one okay. assist. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I took our advice. Maybe he'll want me to show up to the game no more, but it's just always good to see a kid sit back and really listen. You know what I mean? And then I'm proud of him because we wasn't there. So, you know, we ain't have, he ain't have as much pressure on his shoulders, but feeling real good. All right. How about you, man? Checking your temperature. Oh, man, the temperature feel good. Outside of the weather, man, I feel just as happy as our intro. I feel like a lot of things is pretty going good, going into the month of love. February is right around the block, and um, I just feel real good about where things is going yeah. with the show, with uh, the hosting gigs I got coming up. So I feel good, man. The temperature is scorching. Oh, and ever since we made that post on DMV Entrepreneurs, bro, the response from everybody that's put in forms to be on the show, we appreciate you. We going through them diligently, making sure we're doing our research. But from what I've seen so far, everybody looked good. And all the guests that we already got booked too. So super excited, man. We are definitely moving. And we got a special guest for y'all today that we'll bring on to you a little later. Yeah. But that is the perfect segue. What's today's title? Into the topic of tonight, which is For the Love of Connection. You know, we had an off-camera conversation about Wi-Fi, but that's another conversation in the love of connection. Too deep for this, right? But, so the way I look at connection, basic definition, a relationship in which a person or thing is linked or associated with something else. So when I think of connection, I think of a few different scenarios. I think of an artist or an author putting something out into the world and hoping it catches Working tirelessly on that craft, always up, sleepless nights, long mornings, long days, and it's just waiting for the right person to say, that's it. And I know it's not always about that gratifying moment, because if you really love the art, you're doing it for the art. But at the end of the day, these bills got to get paid. We got to do things. And it's about connecting with the people. So in another way I look at it is the love connection. Yeah. It says do it for the love. And to me, the foundation of a relationship between man, woman, 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 whatever you are, whatever creed you come from, it's about really finding something that gives you more to live for, more to love, more to do. And the more you spread your wings, the more you connect yeah. with different things. So tonight's conversation is for the love of connection. So talk to me. So my metaphor, connection tonight, it's like connection is the thread that weaves through the fabric of life and business. Think about it. We're all interconnected in this vast tapestry, right? Mm -hmm. This is my nice word. I, mean, I see vast tapestry. Yeah. And Ding. Yeah. It's my business, word. connection, it isn't just transactions. It's about the relationships, whether it's a customer, a partner, a team, a, mem a team member, the quality of connection, it all shapes the experience. It's about understanding, trust, and the shared goals. So now in life, Connection is what gives meaning to our journey. It's the friendships, the family bonds, the moments we share. Connection is where the richness of life resides at. So as we dive into For the Love of Connection, let's explore these stories. The insights remind us of the power of, of human bonds. And stick around because you never know, we might unravel some new threads connecting the day. Very good, very good. Yeah. So like, I would just like to add a little more to connection. To me, the right connection could change your life trajectory. When you go to college, you're supposed to be, you know, focused on whatever you're trying to get a major in or whatever you're majoring in. But at the same time, those, the network is your network, mm -hmm. as they like to say. Mm -hmm. And it's all about knowing the right people and moving the right way. And when you stay connected, that's the important part. When Facebook and all that was starting, I, started, I said this on a, um, an earlier episode, it was all about staying connected with your friends that was going to colleges all across the country to people that you were no longer about to see straight up on an everyday basis as you were used to since elementary until high school was over. And now, 
it's still used for the same thing, but I don't want people to lose it. That's really the main focus. Like, stay connected with people. The greatest thing about the internet, even though it's making us lazy, I think in a broad scope of things, in a different conversation, I think the fact that you can connect with somebody in a different country and help change their life trajectory mm -hmm. and make them want to become something and do something. I seen something the other day and this is an Asian couple look looked like they was about to go to church and then they just break out and dance. And I'm like, yo, black culture connects people all across this world, bro. And it's just like, connection is so strong and so important. That's why I'm always just so upbeat and optimistic about what life can bring to you. Because you'll never know what you connect to if you don't go out there and you know, put the dots together. Thanks. Um, some of my biggest connections that I've made have been through, the, I'm going to say through God, man, because it's always at the craziest time. And the funniest thing has always been when I've been in doubt or just thinking something wasn't going to happen. It could be a tap on your shoulder or you bumping into somebody or the right phone call or somebody passing your information along to somebody else. You just never know where that connection could come from. Thanks. I think if you have a strong connection and belief in God, and you'd be surprised every time when that that angel or that 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 prayer that you you sent up comes back in that form. So connection is so powerful, man. And I just pray that you believe in something, <clears throat> something that's bigger than you. And you also teach to the next leaf and the next generation how important connection is. Man, just to stay on that path before we go to the next segment, manifestation. Your, in, your inner thoughts, your actions, things that you may have not been, you know, karma has it hit you for stuff that you might have done in the past. Everything is interconnected. This universe is interconnected. So when you really start to realize that everything matters, each moment, every second, every day, you'll stay connected with this world and you'll go continue to prosper. Sure. You know the vibes. So, moving forward for all our first time listeners and viewers, you know how we do. This is when we do our sponsor, you know, highlight. And tonight's episode, we are going to highlight Kiana's janitorial service. Okay. Who was our special guest on? What was that? Was that episode nine? Episode nine. Episode nine. So, Kiana McKell is an Annapolis native who has her own janitorial service, and she is looking for help always. She's fully staffed, don't get me wrong. But as she said on the episode where she on, she started on at $15. Mm -hmm. She's full of people coming from neighborhoods where you know you might try to get that bare minimum $9.95. Minimum wage went up or whatever, but you know, she's starting you off. No, nah, definitely not 15. Not not city. You ain't from New York or nothing, Cali or nothing like that. Yeah. They eating. But at the end of the day, she's looking for you. And I just wanted to say one of her quotes. Bang, 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 where am I at? Okay, let's get with it. So, she's always looking for good workers and she's always delivering quality service. Say goodbye to endless do hmm, say goodbye to endless to-do lists and chores. Kiana's janitorial service is here to give you your time back. Call them today to schedule your cleaning. 443-926-7744 or you can follow on Instagram at Kiana's Cleaning K-E-O-N-A-S C-L-E-A-N You should know how to spell cleaning. You know the vibes. Hey, Luther wasn't giving out $15 and I want to set it up. No, Luther was looking to rob his employees. You know what's bad when your boss looking to get up off you. Like, it's like, damn, it's super fucked up. Yeah, Shout great. out to her, man. Any small business owner that's willing to pay their employees $15 an hour especially doing cleaning is just a show of that integrity right there. Like mm. it's costing her more to pay you 15 than it is Walmart and they ain't at 15. So you gotta get respect. I, will, I won't work for somebody like that. Not only just cause they pay me more, but like I said, it show me a true heart and them wanting to see me actually make a decent living. And just before I uh, segue into the next segment, the fact that she intentionally hires people that come from where she comes from. If you watch her episode, which I hope you do, it's a great one. Episode 10, as we just said, I believe for the love of a fresh start, redemption stories. If you watch it, you will see that her story, and when I say she just is hiring people from the inner city, she comes from a background where she did 5.5 somewhere, where she's hiring people just like that too. So tune in to episode 10, I ain't trying to give away too much, don't be lazy, check us out. So, moving forward, our next segment. This is where we like to poke fun at stuff that we don't prefer. Things that we might not choose outright. Yeah. And it's called Love to Not Love. We don't say the H-E-T-E -E word on our show, upside down, smiley face. Mm -hmm. We love to not love things. So, tonight, you know, Mr. Positive over here to my right, <laughs> he always likes to kick off Love to Not Love. Where are we going at with it? Uh, I love to not love. People who don't pick their kids up all the time, man. <laughs> they have no communication. 
during the process. Okay. You know how bad Lil Raekwon is. <laughs> Lil Raekwon has been with me 30 minutes to two hours past the time you were supposed to pick him up. You ain't even reach out. I'm going to start having a 15 minute grace period. Then we tax him every, every minute after that like the elementary school. <laughs> man. And that's family members and friends, man. Y'all got to be more mindful. You know who your kids is. They with you majority of the time. Right. But when they're not with you, you act like they don't exist. Or like the people who watching them don't need to be in connection with you. Come on, man. Pay more attention to your kids. And they ain't little Raekwon by itself neither. <laughs> little Julia, little Stephanie, little, little Caesar. All of y'all. I've seen kids from all creeds. All of y'all, you know, got one that's all on one. And you know they all on one, too. So, you know, pick them up on time. I know you need an extra 15 minutes, mom and dad. But look, we're trying to get home. That's why I applaud the people who bring their kids with them, man. Shout out to our guests. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into that. I already got my quote in my mind. It's like the perfect moment. But moving forward, love to not love for myself. People who cannot take criticism, but you would thought they started the People's Critics Award. Mm -hmm. The way they always have a way to break down why they don't like what you do. And then it's sometimes they do it to people who have traction. People who's actually winning out here and they like, nah, they not of this, they not of that, it ain't this, I don't like that. And I ain't even intentionally speaking to most deaf because it's a lot of different ways to break up the pop statement. But to me, it's also how you deliver a statement when you're breaking down someone's art, whether you like it or not. You know, only one says shine your light on the world, shine it bright for them to see. Sometimes the light always doesn't look in the same lens as it does in yours, but it doesn't mean that it's still not bright to someone else. You know, so that's what I want to say, man. I love to not love people who like to criticize, but then they definitely can't take the criticism back themselves. Yeah. Like, come on now, let's be better. It's 2024, we at your door. What's your say? My last one is I love to not love people who say they got motion. I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's because I'm getting old and I just don't like new slang. It's the new way for but sure. It's the, and that's crazy because the new slang always say something that don't make sense. Okay. You got motion. Everybody got motion for real. It's just a, it's about the motion as you making progress. Right. So as you going up, even a bum got motion, man. You know what I mean? Them niggas up every day begging for change. That's motion, but they ain't. You know what I mean? It's all about the motion and like motion, man. It's, you know. it's petty, man. No, I get it. You know, I ain't, I ain't even gonna hold you. Motion is not one of the ones that bother me. I kind of, I kind of like it when it's used in the right way. But like everything in this social media, era, some stuff is abused, and it's like, all right, bro, like that is not really what motion is. Like that exactly what you're doing today. Like you're going to the grocery store. Like, all right, it is motion. Like, like, you like, hold it down, but it's really meant to say it's like, I am really, really like growing in this. Like, I'm doing this. Like, like I got motion in this. If motion meant like you was that nigga, you was getting the ass. Like, I got motion. That right. kind of make it a little bit more sense. And I might, but it's You got motion. Really. Yeah, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep your motion. <laughs> so, my second love to not love for tonight <laughs> is the lack of classic music and the time being put into the art today. Um, I come from the era where I'm trying to go to the store and read the book. I want to know who did the art. I want to know who did this beat. I want to know who helped co-write it. I want to know all of that. And more than everything, I want to read the thank yous at the end. Mm -hmm. the, the time when the artist was like, man, shout out to this. And that's why like, I love when J. Cole um, or Kanye, even on um, the first album, uh, College Dropout, when he, um, at the end of the joint, um, mayonnaise color bam I push miracle whip and I am and then he just go into the story what we later seen on uh, the documentary and all of that I love when artists J. Cole at the end of Forest Hill Drives mm -hmm. um, I just love when artists really dive into like yo making this album I just know I did something so great because that's why I, how I look at it making this album I know I did something so great that when the people get this I know it's going to hit hard because that's the thing they recorded this not knowing how it's going to connect like, not knowing how, but I know this is how I felt when I made this. Because one thing I hate is when the artist puts something out there and promoting it the whole time like it's great. And as soon as it come out, like, oh, no, we ain't picked the right thing. Like, oh, no, we ain't do the right thing. Like, no, because it didn't connect, now you're acting like the whole process didn't connect. Yeah. Like, no, hold it down. You love making that record. It just didn't connect to the people when it happens. Yeah. It's just like, when Andre 3000 went in the booth and made Hey Ya, he probably didn't care if it connected. And it connected. The hip hop biz was like, oh, come on, 3,000, but he like, I don't care. Right. It's going to connect because this is music yeah. and it's about a feeling. So get back into the love of the feeling. Get back into the connection of the music, the sound waves. Like, that's what it's all about, baby. Yeah. 
you know? Well, one thing I notice about the new generation as it pertains to music and connection, um, I'm willing to bet that 90% of the collaborations are done via we transfer and sending a file mm -hmm. all the way across state, cr country. Niggas be right block around from each other sending verses. Yo, send me a verse, you know, the, my verse already on it. Get back to the organic connection of artists sitting down, picking out a beat together, right. coming up with a topic together, writing a verse together. I really, when I did music, I really enjoyed that. Like, right. not only, like, because I felt like if you competitive, like what you are in music, shook the post, the person that you're getting on the track, let's see how creative you really are. And, but still make something great together. Like Absolutely. that's the type of competitive matches I like. Like even though we may be challenging each other, this collaboration may be something that lived longer than us, you know? Right. And then even going back to the credit, I seen um, um, Homeboy Bonafide who owns a studio. Mm -hmm. You know, he made a post about feeling some type of way about artists not really crediting the people that mix and master your stuff or the producers. Right. When I did music, I didn't have enough money to print the booklet. Like I love reading from other right. artists I love, but I made sure I developed a way to put the song and then put the person who produced it and the person that mixed it. And if you happen to mix my whole album, then you executive produce my album. I'm giving you that credit as well. Right. If we did things together, we I co-executive produced it. Like, those type of connections will make those relationships and those projects mean much more. And I think that really displays the talent from people and the meaning of connection. And this, this is a new word I want to start using. This is my new abbreviation. I just came up with this on the fly, too. I think I'm brilliant. Worldwide winning, man. That's how I'm feeling about this whole year. And what I mean by worldwide winning, you put your ego aside for the greater product, for the greater good of everyone, the people. When this is put out, it's put out for who it's intended for and for those who just might walk across it. That's what we're doing this entire year. Worldwide winning, man. Talk to somebody today that you might not even ever talk to because they're not in your world. And see how that can connect to worldwide winning. That's what this whole year is about. The love of connection, worldwide winning. Let's put out beautiful art all year. But moving forward, our segment, I'm going to send it over to my brother. Who we shining the light on? Today we are shining the light on prolific hat company. Shout out to my guy Ray Bush. What's up, baby? I'm prolific. Actually, so I'm, gifted. Yes, sir. I'm actually rocking some of his merch and um, apparel right now, which I didn't purchase just for this episode. I actually support the brother. Support the brother. He has the packages and good prices for deals. I'm always hitting them up at least spending 50 to $100. But as you can see, we talked about connection and right. I told you my metaphor of threads. Like when I look at the meaning of this brand, prolific, you know, and what that means to us and the culture and the things that we've created. And then all of this stuff is embroidered. You won't get any prolific hat hoodie that's not embroidered. And it's always top quality threads. And we talked about connection and weaving. This is the type of like quality that I want in clothing. So shout out to Ray. Um, I love the motto for the brand. Never I, always we, which is maybe prolific and powerful in itself. Um, as of now, he's focusing on expansion. So just like this hat that you see right now, which says Tyler Perry's young Dylan, who is from right. Annapolis, Maryland, the young king. He Ray went amongst himself and made the dope connection with them. And now you have a one limited, limited one of one piece. And he does other things like that. And the cool thing about Prolific, I've seen some of the hoodies where if you had a family member, friend, or somebody who passed away, they'll actually put that picture on the hoodie, but it'll be embroidered. One of the, and it's beautiful. Look just like the person that passed away. So shout out to Ray, man. Um, you know, his pieces are memor memorializing lost loved ones with embroidery and threads and weaving connections. So shout out to Prolific Hat Company. Follow them on Instagram and shop with the boy. Man, special shout out to Bush, man. I'm actually going to be doing this wedding reception mm -hmm. um, in a few weeks, man. So shout out to you and Bridget, man. It's going to be a beautiful union. Mm -hmm. And I just want to shout out to the fact that I know he's a love of connection. And I know he's a hard worker. I know, um, as I've been saying, this is uh, Kobe Bryant, 24 year, stand on attack, stand on the attack, the year of the Mamba. And I know that was his man. And um, I know the time that he puts into the brand, and it's all about the people. So, man, special shout out to Prolific. I always said I was going to get that Nipsey Hustle tattoo. Prolific, so get it. I'm the, um, Prolific, so gifted. I'm the type that's going to go get it. No kidding. That's something to live by. So, um, with that being said, we shine the light, and now it's time to shine the light and bring on our special, special guest for this episode. You know, episode 11, man, for the love of connection. That's what we're
up, man? We back at you, episode 11 for the Love yeah. Connection. And we have our very special guest on with us tonight, Mr. Josh Stokes. How you doing, my brother? What's up, man? What's up, G? Thank you Thank so much you for having me. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, say a little quick things, man. Josh is an artist, a producer, a creative director. He's been in the game for over 20 years. And man, it's our blessing to have you all with us today. Thank y'all, man. So and it ain't sure. even been 24 hours, and my guy's a brand new dad again, bro. Oh, oh, congratulations boy, again, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, the way he showed up to the studio, I told myself I was going to do this. I'd be like, I Jayco told 21 on a, a lot. Man, I just stopped in the land at the studio, man. My man 21, he had his kids in there. With <laughs> That's when I knew this is a silent nigga, man. I, I love that shit. Like, yeah, that was a beautiful, man. Yeah, beautiful you got to keep the babies with you. Got to. So um, the way we normally run things is pretty much we try to get to the, you know, the who, what, when, where, why. Uh, for the people, just pretty much like a little quick background of the bio that you know you sent into us, but more you know elaborated on you. Right. So first and foremost, you know, who is Josh Stokes? Um, I am a first of all just an artist, a creator. I'm a father. I'm a uh, son, a brother. I'm a uh, friend of some. Um, I'm just a creator, man. I love just making music and just great moments and um, just doing things at a really like high, excellent level at whatever it is that I do, just trying to do my best mm -hmm. and just put 110% into it and just really uh, make my presence be known at whatever it is that I'm doing, man. I just want to be excellent at everything and uh, I feel like I, I show love and I love to encourage people and just let them know to keep doing their thing mm -hmm. and that um, greatness is in all of us and just to keep pushing until we really like tap into it. Yeah. Um, doing my research about you and your story and some of the things that you uh, I mean, some of the people that you've collaborated with, um, I can tell you have a real unique style, um, but you also have a true love to music and Absolutely. the history of music. I saw that you love uh, funk a lot. Totally. Um, so my question is, can you share a bit about your journey into music and how did you start to love funk and why do you still let funk resonate today? No doubt. Well, um, I was born into a church so uh, with the music and everything, man, it was like kind of just funky out the rip, you know, with the band and everybody playing, the choir singing. So just that always just really attracted me, and I just wanted to be as close to that as I could. Like if I was in the middle aisle, I had to get up on the right the edge of the pulpit to just be right there to get that heat that was coming <laughs> off. I had to get that. So um, it came from just appreciating that music and realizing everything that's in that music like gospel music isn't just like gospel music it's so many like different things like thrown in the pot that makes it what it is nice. so like i was loving funk music before i even knew mm -hmm. you know um a lot of the songs i was listening to a lot of the, the rap music um funk is sampled heavily from that and you know we love it and don't even know that like george clinton did like half of dr dre's catalog but we don't know who george clinton is you know it's just stuff like that that I just appreciate the foundation of it and just to see where it's come from but like I still really just like love that mm -hmm. because like that's where it all started. That's beautiful man because honestly I always like to tell people like music is one of the universal languages awesome. and Absolutely. it connects people on such a broad level is that like if you just pay attention to how si not simple because it takes a lot to make things that connects people. But when you pay attention to the strength of that ass, you'll realize that if we apply that to other issues we have, we'll have more worldwide winning Absolutely. if we paid attention to that detail. So I just think it's a beautiful, you know, thing to take on the music and the soul. So I think you kind of just answer that, but I can ask more so with description. What is New Age Funk to you? Like, what is that? Um, new Age Funk would just be like it being done right now. Okay. And, um just kind of staying true to it and not feeling like you have to be like a caricature, like we don't have to wear like afros and bell bottoms and be talking like we in the 70s. It's not about that. Gotcha. It's about like just wanting to be like a free person really and just exist as an individual and not really be in anybody's box. Mm -hmm. gotcha. real. Like just I'm me, let me be that. Don't try to say like, oh, you're this guy that we can always say what it is. And, Sure. No, yeah, I just want to be me, and that's what really a lot of it is. I think a lot of times it can be made out of a joke, mm -hmm. like, hey, mama, stuff like that, but it's like, that's a joke. Like, what it really is, is like, yo, people who really love themselves, love to create, love, like, kind of, like, 
shedding love and, and light on what's going on in the world, Thanks. like that type of stuff, you know, so mm -hmm. that's really what I enjoy about it. Yeah, before Sal says anything, I just wanted to say, I think that's what a lot of people missed in the message with like those people from the funk era. It's like, maybe I'm wearing the pamp and all of that to get you to look at me, but if you right. listen to what we saying, we're talking about liberation. Exactly. We're talking, we talking about really, really taking this spaceship of where we at in this yeah. society and going crazy. Exactly. So, I love that your insight on it. Thank you. Like, everything can be made aesthetically out of a joke. You know what I mean? Right. But it's like, really, like, what they're saying is like, like you're saying, it's freeing people. Mm -hmm. It was back before viral was viral, I think. Really? I think it was more about bringing attention, like, who is this crazy dude with all these colors in my head? But when you yeah. get up in the phone, you're like, oh, this is a whole new way. I don't care what he looks like. Yeah. He looks he look regular to me. <laughs> like, you know, and you just wind up loving it. Yeah. So me and Buddy spoke off camera last night as we were preparing for this episode. And I said, and we were just talking about funk. And, I, and the first thing that popped in my mind is, funk is a genre that I don't think about one person. Right. Funk has always been a group. It's about connections, you know. Totally. So totally. with all of the people that you've collaborated with, all of these cool artists that you've been around, could you tell us about a project or performance that holds true to y'all? Yeah, well, um, I can remember the first tour I ever did was in 2014. I was touring with, um, it was a gospel tour, but it was a, a really big tour sponsored by McDonald's. Okay. So we were like flying everywhere. It was really, really dope. Right. And I got to play with uh, Erica Campbell from Mary Mary. I got to uh, tour with her. Mm -hmm. And there was another guy I was touring with. His name was Anthony Brown. Um, that was so monumental because it allowed me to meet people on the level that I wanted to be on. Like I was meeting um, production assistants and like the guy that was running the stage during the tour and I was really meeting the people that was like making the moves, like not just the people that's like interchangeable, like hey I played a keyboard for this guy, it's like that's not really as important as you think because somebody else can come and play the keyboard, right. but it's like the production assistant, you can't you know, you can't take that dude's place. Like, he's important. Mm -hmm. And to be able to rub el elbows with those people and to t for them to tell you that what you're doing is valuable, mm -hmm. it's like, I know I'm in the right direction. I know I'm doing the right thing. I just need to stay focused and just keep moving. Like, keep, right. keep that motion. Yeah, that motion. <laughs> <laughs> big motion, big motion. Absolutely. It's crazy. It's crazy that, um, that's a, that's a beautiful take on it. Thank how you, how you looked at that because it's real and that's how people really, really be moving into that and looking into that. So, mm -hmm. my next question is to you is my why question. Mm -hmm. I saw on your Instagram um, one of the videos that you have pinned. The people in the video are saying, men and women, I am you, you are me. That's the way of the future. Yes. Why that statement? And what is it? Is, does that video have a bigger purpose or was that for something in specific or was that just a message to start this year off with? Yeah, so it's actually a promo I was using for my album. I okay. just released the album uh, the first of this year called Universal Josh, gotcha. I Am You, You Are Me. And uh, it was just something in my head. I did a song for one of my last albums and I was just saying, I Am You, You Are Me, that's the way of the future. And I really feel like it's the truth because um, everybody really comes from the same tree. You know, as far as just being a human being, mm -hmm. you know, we all come from the same mother. Exactly. And then with time continuing to go, you start to realize, oh man, you, you, you deal with what I dealt with. Mm -hmm. You know, your father dealt with what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be white or you can be green, but it's the same family issues. Mm -hmm. You need money. You got to eat. Your child is sick. I don't see no color when my <laughs> wife is, you know, sick and I got to, you know, help her out. Anybody can deal with that. So I think, um, and then just living in America, color and things like that have been made on purpose for us to, you know, hate ourselves, hate each other, but it's also a big money maker because we live in a corporation. So black and white and things like that are just constant money makers. And you know, it's hot buttons to keep people divided. So I'm also working on destroying those uh, divides mm -hmm. where it's like, well, I can't like you because I don't wear hats like that. Yeah. You know, and, and it, but it's something really as small as that <laughs> right. that will just divide us forever. And now I hate your whole family for a hundred years because I don't wear hats. He wear hats. Fuck you. I don't like you. Yeah. And that'll start a whole. So and it's much. like, 
you're black, I'm white, so I don't like you. It's the same thing. Right. But we just choose to see it wrong because it's like, nah, man, remember they used to hang out grandfathers, nah, blah, blah. And I get that. But that's the very same thing that the powers use or know or expect to keep us divided forever. Mm -hmm. Forever. And I want to say that, no, yo, you're me. I'm you. I see you. I hope you can see me. I respect you as a person. And I hope we can grow. Because we really have the power. It's not like the government or like programmers, you know, they put on what we like. You give them the power. Exactly. So strong. Hoping that we can hear that and take it back and realize that we, what we say goes. And you know what I love most about that, brother, is that you pretty much just spit the message that I spit almost every day to people. And people don't see it. And it's crazy because when you get to talk to people that are passionate about certain walks of life, you'll respect them a little more. I say, like, I like to always say I play devil's advocate. Then I met a woman that's just, like, so for the fight of um, education, diversity, and inclusion. She was like, the devil doesn't need advocates. Maybe try a different word. And I'm like, all right, I love that, actually, because you're right. So I'm a prospective advocate now because it's the same thing. And when you look at things, when people don't like what you're saying, they'll be like, oh, that's a that's a different fruit. It's right. Like, you know, <laughs> but it's like at the same thing, it's still a fruit. Yeah. And when I look at this world and I look at people, I never tell people to not forget about what our ancestors went through or anybody yeah. went through. But how do we move forward? Tell yeah. the story, educate the story, make sure people know it. Exactly. But what's the next step? How do we move forward to make sure I see you, you see me, yep. we are the future? Because if you see our kids playing together on these soccer teams and all that, they don't care. Mm-hmm. My man, some over here, some of his best friends are Hispanics. And they are treated just how blacks was treated in Annapolis because the dominant Caucasian effect is like minority. So it's like when you really look at the structure of things, we give the powers to people that want to keep us separated. So So I just appreciate your message because that's literally what I live by. And I say that more as my final thought is that me and you don't look alike. One thing I love about you is you got tats on your face, you got your nails painted, you got things that I wouldn't do. You got on the shorts with the tights. You give me so much Wayne skater (laughs) vibes that I love your confidence and your drip because that's not something that I would necessarily do. But I know in my realm of people, I do shit that my OG owns be like, what the fuck you got on, bro? What are you doing? So I love your realness, bro, and I just love your I love your message. Thank and the tale of behind the message that both of y'all said and how connection could still work through differences is like before the camera was on, we all say, hey, we talked about kids. We all had different perspectives of how we live with kids. Your son being autistic, me having two children of my own and my fiance having her own kids, and then you having you know, five, five, you yeah. know? And we may have different ways of parenting, but we can talk and equally agree about things mm-hmm. and may even be inspired. I'm pretty sure there's some things you could tell me about parenting, parenting that I haven't looked at from my relationship with my kids. Or it may be some stuff I may not agree with, but as long as we both and all understand our different boundaries Absolutely. and how we can work and live off of each other, that's going to create that harmony. And it ain't about color, because we could have added a white person in this room with yep, us, and true. his parenting could have been totally different. Exactly. But we all going to learn something. Yep. At the end of the and day, with that being said, I'm, I'm super proud to be a black man. I wouldn't want to be anything else. You know what I mean? Talk that. But at the same time, it's like, if we continue to be played, as far as, the, you know, again, being told, these are your enemies. These are your enemies. And we're not even watching the people that's telling me these are my enemies. <laughs> enemies. You know? The enemies. Exactly. <laughs> the op. So, yeah, it's just strong message. Uh, so. Yeah, um, so this kind of touches on what we spoke about. So, over your two decade career, which I give you props on. Thank, Thank you, you brother. Thank you. So I, I didn't make it that way. Almost, you know. <laughs> no doubt. But, you know, there's a lot of things in music that I kind of got away from, so I still applaud people who stand in there. So, Thank over you. your two decade career, how have you seen the music industry evolve and what are your thoughts on its current state today? Question. Um, I've seen it evolve by becoming more inclusive. And I, I, I use heavy quotes because this is still a very commercial and like kind of fake inclusivity. Do you, you know feel like I mean? Lil Nas X is when we start to be inclusive in the game? No, nah, I think even before that, I think, an example of the game. Um, be. um, okay, if you go say to like, say twenty fourteen when it really started to become uh, a, a resurgence of like more black women R and B singers, like where that was kind of dry for a while, um, or if you use, uh, you can use openly gay rappers. You know, that's a thing too, or. Um, 
you know, just things like that where you just started to see, say, even for instance, like, you actually saw a gay rapper. And that was like, yo, if I see one of them, I'm going to kill him. Yo, that's like an abomination. But it's like you started to see it happen and you started to see inclusion. Like, even you say, like, a person like Lizzo, I don't think 10 years ago you could have saw her because there were so many meetings. Oh, she's not marketable. She doesn't look this, she's not this, she's not that. Right. But now it's like, it's okay to be you and, and they'll try to market you in another way. Like, okay, she's good at the flute, so let's market the flute. <laughs> you know, so it's always right. other ways. But, like, I think inclusion comes and, and it's happening a lot more in, in good ways. Mm -hmm. But I think on the surface is just more like where the industry is like, hey, look, we like everybody, right. y'all. Like, don't think we're your enemy. So at the same time, I still do question it mm -hmm. because of where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it seems like sorry to cut you off. It seems like they're starting to look more of a we should fit this person type in or this is new opposed to what happened to the traditionals, the people that are still hip hop based and just basic but got good music. It's like y'all don't allow those people who people like myself who missed the times when we didn't have social media to right. promote the music or right. I can upload my album the day after I make the song, <laughs> minutes after I make that the song. That real touch, you know? the real connection. Yeah. Like the real connection. Yeah. I mean, you actually got to work it's like they, for getting this content. They forgot about us. Yeah. And uh, that's the, the worst part about it for me. Yeah, that, see, that's not sexy no more. Like <laughs> you, me, us, our age range, that's not sexy no more. They're not even thinking about us anymore. You know, they're thinking about... 15 year olds and 16 year olds, right. and how can we influence them to start thinking how we want them to? How can I get Ice Spice to exactly. love Northwest? How can I get Northwest to love Ice Spice? Totally. Like, and, I, and I, it's an industry, so you get it, but like you said, it's the love of connection, and it should always be marketed that everybody can connect because music don't have an age. At all. So it should be marketed so everybody yeah. connect, but I can understand why you're certain brands. Or, and you know what? I, I gotta stop doing this in 2024, and I know we don't ever do it intentionally. Shout out to the brands and the labels and the places that do put those people in their spins. Shout out to the people in the, uh, the different places that do book them for concerts and shows. Because I do know it's a market. I know older people that are like, oh, I'm going to see the Four Tops at some small little blue spot mm -hmm. in Bowie. Or, you know, so the, it's, it's still people that try, yeah. but the higher element of like, you probably ain't going to see them at the film room. You probably ain't going to see them at the sound stage. But they're going to still go somewhere. So, you know, shout out to the people that are still trying to stay connected to it. But it's definitely, like, a hard fight. And even big on the inclusion thing, like, it was just the 50th year of hip-hop. Right. So, even that older thing, that wall is starting to be pushed a little more. Because you got Jada Kiss still. Mm -hmm. You got older rappers. You just saw the Scarface Tiny Desk. Mm -hmm. That mean, his show just went up. He about to be back on the road right. again. You know, so it's like, it's pushing that notion of... Because you're 35, oh, you gotta get out of here, you know. So it's killing that, and I think that's where you're seeing more of the inclusion, where it's like older people can have a voice now, mm -hmm. and they can be appreciated as opposed to like 10 years ago, you were dead to anybody that was 21. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear what you had to say. So I think it's changing in the the social media aspect, and the the way we use it freely is helping, mm -hmm. because it's like, nah, what about this? Like, uh, Louis Vuitton, y'all stole from Dapper Dan, that's not right, what about this? Right. You know, so like when we put, when we use it the right way, it can shine a light on a thing. You know, it's just about how it's being used. Oh, yeah, it's utilized in a lot of other ways, so it All the time. puts a shadow over like the moment where it's like, that's how you use it. Exactly. You're so genius. Um, was it you, Sal, or was it my question? That was me. That was you? All right, I got one more, I think. When did you know you wanted to use your time and energy to inspire others. All of your messaging has been pretty clear, so I'm sure it could be something that you've already said. But like, when in your journey, because I never asked your age, I, like you said, I assume we're all probably in that same like time, time era. 36. Okay, I just turned 36, so bang, we on the same time. So at what point, because this is actually a great question, I'd love to hear this from somebody that grew up how I grew up. At what point did you just feel like, this is my message? Like, that messaging of, like, we got to stay connected, we got to do this for the world, for the people. Like, at what point? Honestly, I always kind of had that in me. But, you know, it kind of gets pushed down because it's not really a cool message. Mm. But um, I want to say maybe, like, 2015, 2016, where it was, like, I'm finding my voice, 
you know, I, I can kind of stand on what it is that I really believe in and don't really have to worry about if anybody's saying that it's cool or not or if somebody's rocking with me, I'm down to rock alone. I'm okay with that, you know. I'm really okay with like not being liked or like not being, that's my man, come over here, sit with us. Like I'm cool, you know, I've kind of taken the stance of being like the loner and the introvert, so I just stick true to it and just stay to myself. I got some cool family members or three, four cool friends that I like chill and smoke with. Well, the kids the whole thing. Always, family. man, family. always. And it feels so good being home, having your kids there. Yeah. And y'all don't have to be doing nothing. You could be in your shorts, watching a movie, making a burger, and it's like, yo, that was me last night, bro. don't it feel? I feel like I'm a billionaire when I'm doing that. Like That's crazy. nothing else matters when I'm doing that. Right. So I just always wanted to encourage people and make them feel like, bro, you special too. You know, when somebody's always saying like, yo, you amazing. So are you. Right. Yo, you dope. So are you. <laughs> Like, it's not just me, it's not just one person. So We're all dope in all of our ways, and I want everybody to realize that too. Like, in the world that we live in, you matter more if you're on stage. Like, you matter more if everybody is gobbling your nuts, like, yo, yo, <laughs> he's the person. But it's like, it's that facts. does not matter. That doesn't qualify and, and the tr like, that's not real. At all. Like, I can remember uh, Paul Mooney saying that um, a lynch mob is a majority, but doesn't mean that they're right. So just because everybody is riding on this and doing this and doing that, doesn't mean it's the right thing. It doesn't mean that I have to do it too. Like, we're at the age now where we can be kind of established in what it is that we really believe and feel, yeah. and we don't have to be shaken. That's another reason why people don't want to market things to us, because we'll be like, well, I don't know, why is it? And they want somebody to be like, yeah, just give it to me. Yeah. And we're not those people anymore. Mm -hmm. So let me target your children. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like another thing. I want to tell my children how worthy they are and how special they are and that they don't need products or clothes or a million people to tell them that they matter. Yeah. You know, like I want them to know straight from home, you know, you matter, you're beautiful, you're smart. Nobody else's opinion outside of this room matters. You know, and I want everybody to feel that way though. so that's been i was kind of like lovey-dovey for a minute like 2016 writing a lot of love songs but i was like man i feel like it's more to it than just girl i love you you know and they kind of just started coming out of me gotcha bro it's crazy that you said that because i don't know what it is about our age group or the 80s babies but i feel like we all had our real connection in that 25 to 35 range, whichever year it may be for you, but like we lay bloomers. But I feel like when we find it, we sustain it and we grow to be great leaders. Totally. Where I feel like this young age group, they are so smart and so like, we don't want to work for nobody, we want to be the boss. And they get it quick, they get yep. success quick. And then I see them hurting themselves by 20 to 30 because they burnt out on exactly. the mental, oh, or the mental yes. life. And that's with success. Yeah, right. So it's like, I feel like our age group has seen so much coming up and most of our parents was even probably into some shit yep. or coming out of something that we are like, we're like, I don't know the exact word to put first, but we're like, well driven cars. We're like war driven. Like mm -hmm. not war driven, but like we're tested. We're battle tested. Absolutely. That's the word and I think Absolutely. that's why we persevere. Because we're right in the middle. Yeah. Of all man. our parents stuff and all our kids stuff. So we see everything that's happening. Yeah. And like I think that one thing children this age doesn't realize is that things take time and that it's really hard to sustain something. Mm -hmm. Like it can be stressful. Like, people always use the example of, like, Barack Obama when he did the eight years of the presidency and, like, his whole head was gray, like, by the time he did those eight years. That's because of all it took for him to maintain the country. And that's the same thing when it comes to maintaining your business. You know, it's going to be stressful, you're going to get some gray hairs, you're going to be tired, you're going to be upset sometimes. And But that's the reality of it, that our parents really let us know, you're not ready for this. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're straight telling you, it took this, it took this, it took this. You can't do that. Right. But now that you can do everything at the press of a button, you can do it, but you don't know about all the other things it took to really maintain a business. There's so, so much like, microwave instructions out there that even kids see it so much, they're like, all right, well, if you can't tell me, I can go straight to YouTube. And YouTube is a great place to get information. Totally. But sometimes we still need a lot of hands-on training because there's a lot of fluke information out there, too, that people are putting up for likes and yep. 
viral spin. So yeah. it's just so hazy waters to trust. You Absolutely. know, I'd rather just go with that old school connection. That's, that's what I'm just about to say, say that. Because mm -hmm. the, 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 the tribe, the village is strong, man. And that's really where we learn as, as men or as people. But now our village isn't strong like it used to be. And, and just think about that. All of us born in the 80s, right? The era of crack cocaine, <laughs> where the drug literally split up households. But the crazy part about that is I had so much more connection back in the 80s with my neighbors, mm -hmm. with the churches, right. community leaders, all of these different resources that can help me like I always say I'm a product of my city because my mom was on drugs my dad was in the military my grandparents just put a roof over my head so I was raised by going to boys and girls club the salvation army like all of these different hands molded this person to be today Absolutely. and now it's so hard to mold uh a, a diamond in a diamond in the rough you yeah. know so because you don't mean shit because you don't have no money yeah and at the end of the day and if money you, and the, the perception of that money is crazy. Yeah, it's totally so perverted now that like you we we really got to do some real work to get it back because it's like if you don't have no money, if 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 I'm not a popping artist on this podcast, I'm not watching it. You know, if you're not Joe Budden, I don't care. You know, so it's like that's how it starts, and it's like it's that's where like the self hatred starts, and you start like yeah, you're right. It's not gonna work for me. I need to stop. And then you're doing less shows and you're believing in yourself less and you're becoming more and more happy. And then you perform. Exactly. Because yeah. it's all about numbers today. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I saw y'all, I was like, yo, I want to fuck with them because that's where I'm starting. I'm starting from the ground up and we're all building. Mm -hmm. And that's what, okay. exactly. I told Buddy all day, like, we're not going <clears> to, <throat> this right here is a quality product. So even if we go eight, 10, 20 episodes with a small viewing, Oh, that small viewing of people, they know the product. They Absolutely. know how good information. Absolutely. And it reminds me of the old saying, you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. Mm -hmm. You want to hide something from a nigga today, put it in some good quality shit. Yep. That they have to really sit through to right. listen because everybody's so impatient. Right. So if you're patient enough and you didn't last it through these hour episodes, you got so much knowledge to spread. Not Absolutely. only just for yourself, for your kids. Because exactly. every episode, you're getting a different profession, a different person yep. telling you the loss, the gains, the struggles, the gems. Like, but you got to sit through it. True. Mm -hmm. And you got to dig and stop looking for the Cat Williams face, the right. <laughs> Steve Harvey chat. Us, like, really look for those organic shows that's really putting that work in. And I tell Cell I tell Cell all the time that we have a product that's everlasting. It's about totally. love. And the fact that we takes so much time into the detail and how we talk about our topics, how we go into our segments, how we give our guests the proper stage to really, really put out whatever message it is that they want to put out as long as it's promoting that. I know we're going to win. It could come from that right post, that right person we posted us one day, or it can come from that 45 that turned into 145, exactly. that turned into 500, exactly. that turned into 1,000. Yeah. Either way, we're not going to stop. Exactly. And the whole goal is that we're going to keep pushing. So I don't know if Sal had any more questions in a second, right, but this man. is going to be beautiful. You ready? Yeah. So all our first-time listeners and viewers, I felt like that was such good information. It's time for us to let our shoulders loose a little bit. <laughs> and we go into a part of our show called Rapid Five Questions where we give our guests quick questions, me and Sal, back and forth, and we just want to get the quickest thought that comes to you about you and to the people so they can get to know your personality yeah, a little you bit. Answers under 30 seconds, I mean, short as possible. Gotcha. Yeah, we ain't trying to overdo it, and uh, positive Pete over there, no <laughs> kicks at all, because he always has such positive angles. So let's see what his first question is. I ain't more digital. Mm, I'm gonna go, that's a good question, man. Say you've right seen on. the good and bad of it all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool digitally to be able to like record your own stuff on your laptop and stuff like that. But the sound of vinyl and just how that felt. The yeah, aesthetics. Yeah, it's yeah. Different. I'm with you. Okay, so if you could connect with one artist who is no longer here, who would it be? Prince. My man. Absolutely. And if you can just get a quick description, why Prince? Because, uh... I really just appreciated his message as well. Him as a musician, him as a writer, it was just like, he was super profound and was also very independent. Man, for sure, shout out to the purple one. You definitely one of the greatest. Uh, yeah. The fact that you played all those instruments, all those albums, that too. goat status. Better feeling, sex or having a sold out show with a perfect performance? 
having a sold out show <laughs> with a perfect performance. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> That's how you Facts. know. I love it. I love it. I love it. I feel like when you treat your perfect your profession more passionate than you do sex, man, hey, it's a killing out there. Yeah. Right. And I'm about to say you can get it after a performance yeah. with the sold out show. And guess what's gonna happen? Even after you get it after the performance and you get that joint up and you get it up off you, the first thing you're thinking about is like, yo, I fuck that shit. Wait till the next one. Like, exactly. All you really is lost in is in the moment. That's so true. it's like it's really the, that there's so much gems in that answer. It's like both of them are great. Right. Who don't think we belittle in the thing, <laughs> like that, you know? But nothing belittles that to get there, yeah. something different. So my next question, best experience, and maybe you already answered it because you said something about Erica Campbell in 2014, 2015, I think you said yep. But if it's another one, you can give me a second. Okay. Best experience you ever had on stage? Uh, man, uh, just seeing everybody jump with you. Just seeing like everybody being right. at that same place with you and like everybody do this. When it connects. And they all doing it. You know, like I've been in a room where it was like, a hundred people looking at me and they just whatever I tell them to do they do it yeah. and you know they're there with me and I was just sharing that moment that no. and that connected yeah. feels liberal, like ah oh. it was nothing beat that gotcha as far as your creative process do you have any rituals or habits that contribute to your unique sound I like something to that people might not know or question. something that only yeah. your fans would know I like to um, smoke while I'm making beats you know, I might have a joint with me or like a bait pen or something. You okay. um, a paper guy? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like the raw cones. <laughs> okay, I was a, a leaf guy or you're, you're, I'm like a paper, whatever, guy. man. You don't even care. It's whatever. What your preference is the, is the, the, the cones. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, that uh, might be like listening to an interview or something while I'm making a beat. Um, I like kind of just getting inspired while I'm doing something. Maybe like a word or a conversation will lead me into another place in the creation. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I really enjoy doing that. Cool. Gotcha. So you like pretty much being motivated while you're doing something totally. to inspire. That's fine. My next question is going to be, is it tough loving and making funk and soul music in a time where that sound isn't appreciated or sought after by the masses like it once was? And I think I know your answer because you already spoke on the society wanting us to feel small right. when something may not be pushed to the masses. But just in your personal journey, and quickly, in a quick answer, like how does it feel trying to push that funk and that soul in a time where it's like, yeah. it ain't really what's clicking, what's clicking and connecting? It feels amazing because <clears throat> I know I'm remaining an individual and I know that everything is cyclical and in time, the funk is gonna come back. Because to be honest, it's never left. Like. You know, I just heard Nicki Minaj sample the Rick James song. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's not going anywhere. Uh, people still use P-Funk for commercials or still sampling it. So it's never really gone. It's just, again, like the aesthetic of it, like the bushes and the star glasses, stuff like that. But I think I love it because I'm pushing something that's unique, that's rare. And the people who will love it will really enjoy it organically because... Like, I remember when nobody was rocking with him, and now, like, he got a whole sea of people rocking with him, and they know that it's true and right. genuine. Or that time, or the feeling when that sound might catch because a popular artist does it, and everybody that's fans of you gonna be like, man, Josh been making that music for years. Exactly. And that feels great. I remember it was in 2016, and this girl was like, yo, I thought y'all was getting beat, you know, I thought you, uh, he did one of your songs. And I was like, word, thank you. Facts, that's real. Auto tune and modern music, do you love it or love to not love it? Um, I don't love it, but I appreciate it though. Because it's, it's got the funk. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, Roger Troutman, the, you know what I mean? But um, T Pain, of course. I uh, like the Kanye West, how he used it for 808s, of course. Uh, the way Future used it, I liked it. Um, I feel like, you know, even Young Thug, like they, they use it kind of as an instrument. You know, not as like, yo, this is just my voice right. and it sounds perfect. Like I know I got something on it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the way kind they crush. Yeah, and the way they would use it made it sound dope. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, I had two more, but it could be my last one depending on how many more sell got. Quick one. Boosie Collins or George Clinton? Oh man, George Clinton. George. But, I, but I love Boosie though. Yeah. You know, I feel like George didn't Boosie. Like George the OG and Boosie. Absolutely. You're great. 
But you ain't your Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. But it's all love still though. Gotcha. Alright, my last question. Are you a long studio session person or are you short creative verse type of guy? I would say both. I like to be in the studio for long periods of time, you mm -hmm. know, just making beats or making songs or whatever. But then I also have those times where it's like I'm in the house, might make a beat for like an hour and just have to leave real quick. So either way, I, I like both. Okay. Gotcha. As long as you feel the connection when you in there. Absolutely. Got it. For sure. So, man, that was amazing. Pretty much a great do rapid fire questions, my brother. Uh, for all our viewers and listeners, once again, man, episode 11 for the Level Connection, Mr. George Stokes. So at this moment, is when we spin the block. Mm -hmm. And spin the block to us means anything that we talked about already, maybe a question that we asked you and you was like, damn, I could have said that answer as well. Just a moment for us to spin the block on something that you want to elaborate a little more to our viewers, to your followers, on anything that we discussed or maybe something that such a mind you didn't bring up initially. All right. Um, I heard somebody mention Kobe Bryant. I love Kobe Bryant. I feel like that's like my spirit animal. Mm. Um, Where were you when Kobe got? I was actually at my son's basketball game at the YMCA on uh, Greenmount. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's how you know it's tragic. Ross wanted like you know how everybody knew it. Nine eleven. You know, everybody knew what it was, and they had the same thing with Kobe. Yeah. Died, and to me, Kobe died is more important than nine eleven. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, um, it. I just I, I consider him like a friend of mine. You know, I don't really talk to a lot of people, so like Kobe, Michael Jordan, Prince, Michael Jackson, people like that, I kind of consider my friends or like people that I would like listen to or like take tutelage from or like what's already been done is, is going to be done again. Um, and he always just inspires me to like stick to my guns and just know that everything isn't going to be perfect. Like some people are really going to hate you. Some people are really going to not believe in you and be like, yo, you can't do it. You. Mm -hmm. But it's like, now what? I got to keep going. I got to prove you wrong. I got to prove myself right. I know that I can do it, but it's always so much outside noise. And with him on one of the grandest stages, I know that noise can get loud. Mm -hmm. And for him to like be able to block it out and still be great and succeed in such that way. Yeah. I love it, man. Before Beats by Dre's, <clears throat> that whole commercial when they show the athlete coming in, they got the fans. Yeah. Kobe did that before. And Kobe never wore, I ain't never seen him wear headphones like that. Really. He wasn't a big headphone or music person, at least from what I saw. But dog, bro, straight dog, Absolutely. no fear. He didn't care who he was playing against. I had, I wasn't a big Kobe fan, but I had so much respect for him. Right. If he was playing against my team, I was shook. I yeah. went, you you can't shit on a guy that you know playing against your team and you at the edge of the bed like this. <laughs> right. I hope it's going to miss. miss. Let him miss. He's praying that he only yeah. got 20 or 30. You know, no, he had throw. Only, you know, yeah. so shout out to Kobe Bryant, yeah, man. I said that same thing with Kobe. I was never like a huge fan of him, but I always respected him. It's because if you love, I always tell me we are naturally competitive. But if you love the game, then you're going to know who's great. You're going to know who is like, yo, if, if the game has somebody to represent it, this is one of them guys. Mm -hmm. And Kobe has been there from day one, starting at high school. Yeah. So I feel like it's such um, a blessing to have had somebody like that to inspire people, even if you weren't a fan of them. And I remember I was sitting at my sister's house getting ready for the, um, I think it was the Oscars that night or maybe the Grammys. Yep. And um, it just, it was a cloud of entertainment for like two, three weeks. Yeah. And it, maybe that damn year. Um, because it just was so like gut wrenching, and it was like Kobe Bryant, like right. God damn. Yeah. So yeah, that's been the block, and I think that was a great answer because it's like I, don't, I think you might have been the first person to spin the block on just giving props to something we said within yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Like it wasn't even about you. You was like, man, I think I heard somebody mention Kobe. I love Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not like one of the old school vibes. Like, somebody said something about some gumbo. <laughs> Kendrick album, he's like, who's that about some Um, so uh, that was beautiful. Um, and I honestly, within that, um, I let Cell pretty much go into hidden gems, but um, I'll let him explain. Yeah, so going into our next segment for all the first time viewers and listeners, uh, hidden gems is where we ask a question or we allow our guests to speak about the hidden gems of their profession or some of the things that they have learned or that may have contributed hugely to their success or that light bulb moment in your career where you're like, ah, I could have been doing this, getting my work done a lot sooner to, instead of taking the long road. So Thanks. in this Hidden Gems segment, the first question that I did have was, um, 
just sharing a moment of your story from your journey that the public might not be aware of, but was significant in the impact of your career. Well, again, or, um, on you. The, the 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 constant doubt is a motivator for me. Um, you know, people kind of feeling like, man, I don't think you won, man. I don't think you can do it, and just constantly proving people like, yo, I'm gonna show you. Like my whole life, I've kind of been like a underdog, if you will, like not really rocking with people, didn't really want to uh, be in the crowds. So I would kind of be over here just in the woodshed, perfecting my craft and making sure I was really, I was never really like a, just a brown noser, just wanted to hang around because you might put me on with something. Right. It's like, yo, uh, I will create my own opportunity over Five, here. Seven, totally. Yeah. And, and one thing that's been common in my life or consistent is that has actually happened, mm -hmm. you know, and I've always been able to do that. And so uh, I love always being able to prove myself right or just stay consistent with uh, what it is that I know I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. It's easy to tell a person that they can't do something more like what you shouldn't be doing, but if you're not feeling what that person is feeling, you shouldn't really be speaking on it. Nice. And uh, with a person with such high passion, I think all we should be doing is just encouraging them instead of telling them, wow, I don't think you should be doing this because ah, uh, my man tried this and it might not work. So, you know, just consider that. And it puts that doubt there, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it makes them want to quit because, you know, he did tell me this was going to happen. So I should stop right now. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's, it's about delivery. Absolutely. Thanks. <clears throat> that was it? Good on the gems? Yeah, that, well, I, that was my one gem question, but I mean, if you had any other gem uh, that you felt like stood out to you in your career that shaped the way you look at things, or it might have been a connection. Yeah. Someone um, that can inspire. Yeah, well, uh, I would like to tell everybody to just don't be a pushover, but remain a, a nice person. Remain a person that is uh, easy to work with people. Um, you can do your job well where people trust you, where they feel like they don't have to be looking over your shoulder to make sure you're doing it. Uh, make sure you're punctual. Make sure that you are a kind person. Um, and just somebody that people feel like they can be around and they don't feel weird or they don't feel uncomfortable. Um, that goes a far way in, in any line of work, you know, just being a cool person, not starting a lot of drama, um, and just being really serious about what you're doing. Like in the entertainment industry, you'll come across a lot of people and you get closer and you realize they're not serious. But it's like, yo, how did you even get here? Right. You know, it's like, I knew this person, I know this person, that's my man. So that's how they keep climbing that ladder. Is that a play? That's a super play. A play. <laughs> oh, 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 like a play. play. Absolutely. Because it's like, you know, they know how to do just enough of what it takes to stay around. Mm -hmm. They're never really putting in the work, but they know how to like, the right people like them for exactly. doing the right things. Exactly. So, you know, um, that's never really been my thing. I, I want to stay tried and true and just know that I'm here because I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, man, those are the, those are the elements. Right. Um, trust in yourself, you know, remain a good person, and uh, be reliable. Gotcha. And it's crazy because when I said the word inspired, I feel like you went immediately in on like inspirational moment and yeah. message. Because that's the segment that we normally do after Hidden Gems. Right. And I feel like you just gave the people one. And we'll at the end of our open minutes, we'll give you the floor again in case it's something right. else you want to say. But um, pretty much from that forward, I mean, before I actually move in, I want to say a special shout out from something he just said to the Griseldas. It's people like Conway the Machine, Benny the Butcher, West Side Gun, because that's somebody that stayed ten toes down and right. now more people in hip hop are doing the boom back and is bringing it back. And it's because the Derringers, the uh, Alchemists, and the producers that like we were talking about earlier with like classic albums, those are the people that want to lock in with an artist and be like, how can I bring the best out of your sound? How can I bring the best out of your bar structure? Yeah. How can I bring the best out of you? So I love that uh, Just Stance and what you said about you. just like staying 10 tones down and not being the person that I ain't gonna call no artist out by names, but the people that you know and you look at me like, how the fuck do they just keep on right. it? It's like, it's nothing tangible. It's like, they're doing all these numbers, but when you go see their shows, it's crickets in the audience. Yeah, totally. And it's like, who know these songs? That they doing all of this work? Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, they with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get it. They pay for all of that. I get it. Mm. So after that, um, we'll have a moment where we talked about yourself. We talked about how you are. We talked about everything that you do, which from being a family man to a musician, artist, producer, creative director. Mm -hmm. 
this is a moment where if it's something that's happening in the world, it could be something as major as war conflicts. It could be something as simple as a joke you heard the other night and you feel like this comedian deserves some light. Right. Um, this is just a moment for you to talk about what's trending in the world to you, a topic or conversation. Well, um, I would like to, again, uh, just bring some attention to my album I just dropped, Universal Josh, I Am You, You Are Me, streaming everywhere. Uh, if you have the time, please go check that out. Um, I feel like it's just an album of just uh, empowerment, encouragement, reminding people to uh, be themselves and be proud to be themselves, to um, appreciate the idea of family and uh, just to just appreciate uh, what the family structure is and how it helped us and how we were able to grow from it, um, from everything, you know, the discipline, the, the good times, everything. And I uh, just want people to know that they, they too can do it. Um, I've been promoting this album. I'm going to be going on tour in the spring to uh, promote the album. So I'm just really excited, man. And um, I just had a, another baby maybe like a few hours ago, like 2 o'clock this morning. So um, I'm just super excited about being a father again. And shout out my son Judah, all my babies. And um, yeah, man, that's about it. That's fucking awesome, man. Um, and just to piggyback on that for once, man, shout out to the album. I'm gonna definitely give it a deep listen. I listen to a few songs, but I want to like really, really sit with it and give it a vibe and go with it. Because I love alternative music and I love all styles and genres of music. I, was, I, grew, up, I grew up like that, just growing up in an era with older parents, older siblings, and it's coming up in an era like the rock song I was singing. I grew yeah, up in that yeah, TRL yeah, yeah. era. Absolutely. So, like, yeah. all of that, like, soft punk rock and all that, like, I love yeah. that type of shit. So, um, and I just wanted to say shout out to all family structures. I know, like, something I just took out what he just said is that like how people wanted to clown King and T.I. on him a few weeks ago and then you see within a week of that him and him doing a podcast together they celebrate 20, uh, 20 years of trap music and the entire family is there doing different parts of T.I.'s songs through his career like I'm not a big reality show fan but when it go down to history I really hope that family hustle goes down as one of the greatest organic reality TV shows of all time because I really think that T.I. and Tiny put their family first even if it goes down on the jokes that y'all thinking he deserved better because y'all don't like how Tiny look. That family dynamic of how they stay locked in and connected with each other and family over everything is really something that could be learned from people regardless if you like Escape or Tiny or T.I. Right. Urban Legend or anything that come with the brand. Oh, like it's about that. Oh we could use Rev Run family for Facts. One of the top family TV shows as well that I would put next to that one of all time because it has such a great premise and backstory behind thing. it. And I love how he ended every episode in the hot tub right now. Black Bear, yeah. Bear. Yeah. Yeah. That really is a stamp in our time, you know? Yeah, man. And it's crazy that I, I feel like shows like that were so good that the media or powers that be depicted it like they wasn't getting the views or right. traction it was supposed to. But mm -hmm. even shows like that, even when we've been uh, late teenagers seeing that, I felt like it was impactful for me to see a family that I didn't grow up with. And the only family that I remember seeing on TV growing up was like the Cosby's. And I can't really judge that family because it's not real. So right. those shows and those moments are shit, real powerful right. moments for me not having all of the structure of a typical Right, absolutely. But, so, yeah, yeah, so with that being said, man, I think that pretty much was like great for open moments, and this has been a great episode, brother, for a lot of connection. Thank y'all for that. Well, thank you again, sure. man. Sure. You know the vibes. I feel like I got a shout out as usual. Atelier Baltimore, our studio. You know the website, do it for the love.com. Please continue to stream, like, subscribe, share the love. We need you. We want to keep going up. And the only way we go up is with your participation. So we appreciate everybody that's been coming through with us. I want to send a special shout out to our Shine on Light sponsor tonight, which was the none other prolific. Shout out to Bush. And I also want to shout out to our sponsor highlight, who was Kiana, Kiana's, Kiana McKell's janitorial service, who you can go check out on episode 10 for the love of a fresh start redemption stories. Josh, man, any one last message you want to send out to the people before we get out of here? Because I feel like you've had such a powerful <clears throat> message, and I'm a unifier, I'm a connector, okay. and I'm moved by your message. So I'm shout out your social, so yeah, we can connect. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, you can follow me on um, Instagram, uh, Josh Stokes, PMA. Um, I put all my information for show dates and music and stuff on there. We can connect on there. Um, I'm on Facebook as Josh Stokes, and uh, Twitter as Josh PMA. So we can connect on there. Um, keep loving yourselves and your family. 
For sure. And before one more thing, what's the newborn's name? Judah. This episode is dedicated to baby Judah. We ain't never oh, had a guest man. that had a baby with that hours of coming say us. I'd have canceled on the next That's right. So, man, <laughs> shout out to baby Judah, man. This one's for you. Yeah, yeah, remember this before we close out. The power of connection is strong. It's important. Don't mess up your connections. It's like the bridge and, the bridge, and we ain't burning them. So, with that, we out for the love, baby. For the love, baby.